and we'll get going. So hi, I'm Chef Tennis, and we're here with Renee Baud today, and we're going to make some, uh, do some healthy eating with a vegan superfood slaw. And you know, you have to remember, this is in beta, and everybody's just learning this, so it takes time, and uh, we'll get it, you know, and it's, it's just trial and error, trial by fire, and just take a deep breath, and <laughs> move forward. That's all I can type. But, you know, there's a little tricks, a few tricks to it. It's not hard. It's just when you're trying to do it at the time of, it gets overwhelming. Yes. So, yeah. Yes, it definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Um, so I know you, so I'm, I had the double cameras and that's not working. So I need to uh, mentally shift a little bit. But um, Chef Dennis, I know you do this. This is a, this is a hand knit little washcloth thing but it works great and i put it underneath my cutting board so that it doesn't slip yep. right? um yes. and i know you do that you wet yours though don't you yeah i do uh, you know it, it depends on what kind of a, a surface it is i mean you could probably use one of those little those rubber mats too anything that's going to grip the cutting board just a little so it doesn't slide but I, I, in a bind i've wet paper towels and just put them down there yeah, because I think that's really important for when people aren't when, especially when you're cooking a lot of raw foods, you spend you can spend a lot of time sitting and chopping and things like that. Um, so that that was one thing that I wanted to mention. That's one thing that I always say to my kids, you know, make sure that you're, you know, especially when they're cutting potatoes, because I can just see, you know, the whole Julia Child. <laughs> that, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have that coming into my mind as I'm teaching them how to cut certain things. Um, so this, what we're making today is a super food slaw. Okay. And I make it uh, a lot of different ways depending on what is in, um, what is in season or what I have available because I live kind of out in the boonies mm -hmm. and I don't have, um, we have grocery stores, but they don't have a lot of um, necessarily um, fresh, interesting produce. Where are you located, Renee? I am an hour north of Chicago okay. and um, less than 20 miles from the Wisconsin border. Oh, all right. So I'm amongst GMO cornfields, which is kind of funny because that's like, you know. I know opposite of what um what i do so the first thing that i do when i when i do my cold slaw is um well let me back up when i super food when i was researching superfoods like what are the 10 most nutritious foods there were there weren't like every website i went to every place there were 10 different foods which then made you know i was thinking then a superfood could be like anything right so it, it it was kind of i i never really thought of um i never really thought of superfoods as being just anything that's fresh and good for you so this particular slaw has in it this kale mm -hmm. um and this is dinosaur kale not the curly kale so, um, and I'll show you the curly kale in a second. So it looks like dinosaur skin. Wow. So, um, and this is super, super easy to grow. Like you can grow, I grow it in the front yard as ground cover with the strawberries <laughs> because I have an edible landscape. So, and to do this, you just, um, you just, you don't want to really eat this stem, but everyone, all the animals, in your neighborhood will love the stem um so it just comes out like that and then you've got this left now if you're going to cook this you would boil it for five minutes and when um i was at an engine two retreat with forks over knives and when they said boil it for five minutes i was just like going no way you know who boils anything for five minutes but let me tell you it was phenomenal so i it was really it was amazing so when i do boil it um oftentimes if i buy a huge bunch like this i will boil it and then either put it in the freezer and use for another meal or i will um just kind of eke it into things you know spaghetti sauce or 
you know, polenta, super yummy on polenta. Okay, sidetracked already. Um, so kale goes into this recipe and ginger, mm -hmm. a hunk of ginger. So ginger, you just buy it. Like if you, a lot of people don't um, know how to buy fresh ginger. I mean, you can buy it in a lot of ways. I like to buy it fresh because it's just so good in so many things. And then you just, you know, kind of do that. And then you uh, can't see, but I just cut off a hump. And then to peel ginger, it's, you don't need a peeler. You can just use the a spoon and it just comes right off. Wow. So you don't, and the kids think it's hilarious because it's kind of spits ginger at you. Um, we go through a lot of ginger in this house because ginger is, um, it naturally soothes your stomach. So if you have a lot of um, stomach issues or, um, you know, just have rumblies in your tumbly, um, you can, uh, we make ginger tea. We just heat hot water and put ginger in it and fresh mint because we grow a lot of fresh mint. So I will put this, so there, it's peeled in that amount of time. So kale, ginger, lemon juice. Yeah. Hang on my computer. So le just lemon juice, so I'm gonna cut that in half now. And, um, Chef Dennis, I wanted to show you this. You're going to get excited about this. Okay. This, this is my lemon tree with a real lemon on it. We you are going to. You keep it indoors? Yeah, indoors in the winter and then outdoors in the summer. And this Sunday, we are picking this lemon and we are, because it's ready to pick, right? Mm -hmm. And we are going to have, um, you know, we're going to make a big deal out of it. I don't know. So you can grow lemons in the Midwest. So as part of my um, my idea of being a micro farmer and growing your own food, that's that's one of them that you can do. And these are Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. And um, and you you had a recipe just recently with Brussels sprouts, didn't you? I, I think I did. And uh, I've used sprouts for slaw before. They're really good. Yeah, but they're oftentimes bitter. So when I'm looking for a Brussels sprout, I'm in the summertime, you can get them on the stalk, and that's the best way to get them. But if you can't, um, look for really green. Really green because they're just better. So I take the end of the Brussels sprout and then just lop that off. That goes in my compost. And I don't peel back a lot of layers. Um, I just peel back a few layers to get it so that it looks nice. And then when you cut it, isn't that a beautiful color? Oh, I yeah. love, love the green of Brussels sprouts. I, um, Machismo just mentioned to make sure the sprouts are tight and not loose. That usually means they're dry. Yes, and when I think when they when they turn that yellowish color, like when you if you see them like this in the store, if they're that color, then that's when they've been peeled back, peeled back to you know have them look nice. So there's this core in here, and I have found that that's like the bitter part. Ah. So I just take that out, like a, it's like a little itty bitty tiny cabbage. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm Polish, so I get excited about things that look like itty bitty tiny cabbages. Okay, so that's, um, I'm just going to do that for both of them. Yeah, those so, are big sprouts. I mean, I don't always get them that big. A lot of times mine are smaller. Well, I, it's kind of, I have a, do I have time for a sprout story? So this oh. is the other one. Okay. So when they're this small, we'll cut them in Oh, 
when they're this small, you see the core, you can see it a little bit better that way. The core is kind of small, so you could just like lop it off that way. Um, but even when they're small, I still cut them off. But um, I really wanted Brussels sprouts in this recipe because the kids also want roasted Brussels sprouts. And um, that's the way they like them most. That, and to get kids to eat Brussels sprouts is kind of tricky anyway. So they love um, they love them roasted. So I just roast them in a pan in a dry you know roasting pan, no oil or anything. And I just add a little bit of salt and pepper, and then I take them out usually like before I go for pickup. And then they're perfect. They're the perfect temperature when all the kids come home, and they just dive bomb this pan of roasted Brussels sprouts. I would not have ever thought. You know, I never read that in any baby book, you know, what the what the baby books don't tell you. They don't tell you that if you cook food and leave it on the stove with salt and pepper on it, the kids will love it. Yeah, there you go. But um, so this was the only bag of Brussels sprouts that was in the store today. So um, I bought them. And so this bag of Brussels sprouts was uh, four dollars. And they were the cashier lady. So this is my digression. So the cashier lady said, oh, I can't believe that you would pay $4 for a bag of Brussels sprouts. And I'm like, well, you know, this is like a snack for four kids or, you know, I'm putting some in a salad. You know, it's, it's not really that $4 did not seem like that much to me. And um, it was interesting that just the social, um, just culturally and socially how we look at vegetables, right? We wouldn't think twice about paying five, four or five dollars for a cup of coffee. Yeah. But you buy something green for four dollars and like people are kind of freaked out about it. So I thought that was super interesting. That is. Um, I have pumpkin, uh, raw pumpkin seeds. And so I, that's another superfood. Really, any kind of nut that you want to add on top of it. Um, I'm adding the raw kernels to the creamy slaw, and for the other slaw, I have I will put um, I have these pistachios Ooh. from my cranberry pistachio biscotti for Christmas. I have some pistachios left over, so I'll put that on the one that's the vinegar and oil base. Okay. Is that all my, oh. Blueberries, uh -huh. another one of my superfoods. And you know, the kids, what I found is that the kids go crazy. Oh, if I just add a few blueberries to the top of something. And Target just had these blueberries on sale, so I bought them. But Target also has frozen organic blueberries that are super cheap. So you can make this salad, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you can you can incorporate a lot of different things into it. And then honey crisp apples. So it's going to have um, ginger, I didn't even count them up, ginger, lemon, Brussels sprouts, kale, apple, And I'm cheating a little bit here. I bought a bag of um, broccoli, uh, broccoli and carrots, and red cabbage. Mm -hmm. um, because I did this because the the only, <laughs> again you kind of have to make do when you go to the store. That's why I, I you know I'm bringing different things into it because when I went to the store today, all of the bro they had no organic broccoli. Not that I'm, I, I buy, when I go to the store, I buy food that is, that looks best to me and looks freshest. Mm -hmm. So if the organic thing looks freshest, I buy that. If the, or, or if the non-organic looks freshest, I buy that. Um, but I bought this because I thought it would, um, might, I might need to, uh, well, for two reasons. One, I thought I might need to um, uh, speed up the recipe. And the other one was the broccoli did not look good at all so i bought i bought this 
You got to do what you, what, what you can do. I, I went to get collard greens for my recipe today for my meatloaf, and they didn't have any. And while they're looking for me, I noticed there's a bag of chopped collards. So normally I would not have bought that, but you got to do what you got to do when you got to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A question here. It says uh, Lisa wants to know, I think it would be good uh, without pistachios. We have nut allergies in the family. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, yes, we um, my kids love nuts, except one of mine doesn't. So for that, I use hemp seeds because that offers a little bit of crunch and vis visual texture to the top. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing, I can put this on anything and they'll eat it, are these dang coconut. So is coconut a nut? Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm, I, 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 no, she says no. Okay. So there you go. Uh, so clearly, I have no nut allergies. But if you put this crunchy on top, mm -hmm. then it, it adds that, you know, that crunchy that the kids kind of like in a salad. Okay. Um, the FDA yeah, yeah. Is the tree tree nut allergies. Allergies. Great. Great. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that I bought was these super greens. And this um, uh, this has arugula and spinach and Swiss chard in it. And I like to cut this up because not every it adds a little bit of color, especially um, you know, these the red stems. It's uh, it's just adds a little bit more color. And it kind of um, you know, mellows out the kale. Yeah, I love those. I buy them all the time. Super we, green. Yeah, you know, I they steam down, and so we steam them down, and we just put them on everything. Yeah. I mean, put them on sandwiches with hummus. You know, I don't know. If it's an open face sandwich. Mm -hmm. I think that's a. I've heard that that's a, a, another Polish thing, but I grew up. We we only ate open face sandwiches, and when I when I finally went to college, and people like had two pieces of bread, I'd be like, going, "What what is that? Why are they doing that?" It was kind of funny. Um, and then this is radicchio, and this adds again, it adds another color, and it just adds a little bit more crunch to it. So these, I I leave it. I um I washed this a little bit ago, and I leave it as whole as I can. And then I just take this part off. And then, um, I, I do a lot without the knife because I want the kids to kind of really feel what it's like. And it's, you know, it's safer, right? Okay, so I have that going. The salads, or the dressings. Let me... So Mama San was my the Japanese chef that I um, I uh, she taught me a lot of what I know, and she did everything in thirds. So uh, it was all a third, a third, a third, two thirds, a third, and I just found that to be a really easy way to um, remember things. So the olive oil and vinegar dressing has and you always think i teach the kids to think um you want you always want more fat in something versus the vinegar so more fat so the olive oil is fat so there's three tablespoons of olive oil And I don't get too crazy about my olive oils. This is actually a Trader Joe's, um, and it's a, it's a peppery has a peppery flavor to it, and the kids love that. So that's three tablespoons, and then three teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. So that will be. A little bit of salt or pepper and 
and my pink Himalayan salt. The, I, I love these shakers because then I can add um, different other different salts to them. Uh, so sometimes I'll do uh, the gray Celtic sea salt and the pink Himalayan because it, it looks pretty. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's all about looking pretty, right? It is. People okay. are in their eyes. So I'm not sure here. Let me I'm gonna go. So we just want to get this emulsified. Or as I tell the kids, we want it all one color. There you go. So that's that's how I teach. Um, that's how I teach them. Then the the other one is the other dressing is again, I'm gonna do it backwards this time. Three teaspoons of the vinegar I have a lot of stuff on this counter and I use veganese mm -hmm. and then I just do three tablespoons and usually I make this um, this recipe at the same time so I always do the oil one first because I don't mind oil going into the veganese, but I don't want the veganese going into the oil. And regular mayonnaise will work as well, right? I'm sorry? Regular mayonnaise will work. Yeah, actually, yes. Regular mayonnaise or Miracle Whip because my kids, um, one of my kids discovered the difference between Miracle Whip and mayonnaise. So now... Um, Now they only do, um, no, they well, only do, yeah. Miracle I worked Whip. for Kraft for a while and I use, I love Miracle Whip. And uh, we were at a meeting and I asked the guy, I says, how do you make that? He goes, do you like it? I says, I love it. He goes, you don't want to know. Yeah. Yeah, probably not. So then I'm taking my um, lemon and I will just add a little, like half of a lemon to each one. And this one, and then again, I'll be cleaning off the computer in a second. Uh, and then again, you just go until it uh, becomes all one color. And the, I don't, the kids don't really, and my husband really, he likes the, uh, I don't like the creamy one at all. It's just not my thing. Um, so, and they don't like them thick. I'm getting the seeds out of my, uh, they don't like a thick swath to it, right? So this, I will, I don't need these anymore, right? I think I'm gonna have to pay one of my kids to uh, do the dishes today. <laughs> All right, can I go this way? Yep. All right, great. Um, so I'm gonna start with the radicchio. And you, I like everything sort of long. So I'm gonna make the, uh, the creamy cold slaw first. The, it's the same ingredients in both. So that was what, two leaves? Mm -hmm. I, I don't like cutting these little, um, uh, where's my ginger? So g the ginger, you kind of want to not get a hunk of ginger. So I'm nervous cutting in front of you, Chef Dennis. Oh, don't be. You're doing great. I, you know, I, I have never been able to use one of those knives. I was trained with a French knife, and I need that rounded. <laughs> it's weird. Well, you know, this is actually this is the knife that I was trained on, and so so where you do the you know you, rock, yeah, yeah. I'm much faster with this one, but um, I bought this. I went to get one like this mm -hmm. that had a deeper, 
you know, whatever you call that. So it's more rounded gotcha. because someone said that I needed that. But um, do you see how beautiful this is? Oh, I know. They're gorgeous knives. I I had to buy it because it was just so – and I make jewelry, right? Mm -hmm. So I – I work with metal all the time and I just saw this and I thought it's just too beautiful not to have. Yep. So I bought it and you know what? I really kind of like it. You know, it's taken me a little while to get used to, mm -hmm. um, but I really like it. Cool. Okay. So how am I on time? Oh, you're fine. We have a visitor from down under just joined us. She says she can't sleep. AJ. And conjure <laughs> food, and Chef Michael is in the house too. Oh, great! Uh, so with the kale, you know, I just leave it like this, and I don't. I make this. Up. We'll eat this. We'll eat this tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, but it really, I like the lemon juice and the vinegar to kind of sit with. I want them to have a party, right? right. And so it's kind of like a ceviche. But it's not like cold slaw with cabbage. You have to leave it a lot longer than, um, you know, that's almost like a day ahead if you want it to be nice. And this, you don't need to do that, right? You can make it in the morning or you can make it at night and have it the next day. So that's how much I've got going in there right now. Um, oh, where's my apple? And if I, I found also that if I put apple in anything, um, the kids will eat it as well. I don't know what that's all about, but so I just, some stuff I chunk so that they can see it. And then what I kind of don't want them to see, I, um, I make shred sort of. Okay. So I've got Brussels sprouts, lemon, ginger, kale. Radicchio. Then for these, and you know, like you said, Chef Dennis, you can really, um, you can br buy the pre-made stuff, and I'll show you what I bought there here in a second um, with the pre-made stuff. What am I miss? Oh, I'm missing this. And then I add just, you know, a little handful of um, the broccoli. So then this salad's pretty much done. Oh, oh, no, it's not. That's why I've got everything laying out, right? So a handful of pumpkin seeds. And then a handful of blueberries. When I buy blueberries like this, um, as soon as I come home, I rinse them and then uh, put them in the colander, let them dry a little bit, and then put them back in the refrigerator because the kids, um, the rule in the house is you can always eat any fresh fruit and vegetable you can find. Mm -hmm. So if I buy something like this, it could be gone, you know, within minutes of me coming home and they don't have to ask me. Right. Right. Well, that's beautiful. I know. Isn't it nice? Oh God, what a, what a great combination. You know, the only thing I would throw in at this point and only because I have a, a bunch of them in the house would be some Mandarin, some tangerines I have. Uh -huh. some uh -huh. And that's because in Florida we have them all the time. I know. Well, it's funny because the kids, I'm opposed to buying these, mm -hmm. but when I was out of town, here, I'll put the thing up. When I was out of town this past weekend, I went to the cabin and um, I went to the cabin and I was really glad that we eat a lot of raw food because we had no water at the cabin. Mm -hmm. So three mm -hmm. days without water at the cabin was a bit tricky, but I digress. We made it out fine. So... My husband bought these for my son when they went shopping. 
and I'm kind of opposed to them because I don't like I don't like this for a lot of different reasons. But um, when I was putting the salad together, my youngest, my eight-year-old, who gets very excited about these because he never gets them, he's like, "Mommy, on my salad tonight, will you put the oranges on it?" There you go. Yeah. Yes, and you put this on your um your leftover salad. Yeah. Well, oh my god. Your Italian Please. leftover salad. They were so sweet next to the cheese and the meats. I, I couldn't believe how it changed the flavor of them. I mean, they're sweet to begin with, but it was like eating candy at that point. But yeah, fruit, people don't think about fruit and nuts on salad are, are just wonderful seeds. Anything that you can use to add some, some different textures and flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one, one salad that's already, that's their salad that's done up. Okay. And then um, my salad will be the exact same thing, except it just looks a little different because I um, like mine a little chunkier. So when I'm making, oh, I guess I should show you, right? This is how I make mine. So this is the vinegar one. And that, so those are my apples. My lemon is already in there. My blueberries. What the heck? <laughs> I mean, really, Who, why, why leave just a few blueberries out? And I'm going to put in my ginger. Yeah, I have to start using ginger more. I don't use it enough. And now that you showed me how to peel it. I have a YouTube video on that. That's amazing. Okay, so. And all of my wooden spoons have so much character in them because I, uh, you know, I'm not always watching what I'm doing, right? <laughs> My husband always goes, are you, uh, are you like smoking something in the kitchen? Like, <laughs> are we having like, but he gets excited. He thinks we're going to have like barbecue or something. And I'm like, no, that's just the, uh, the, uh, way we're doing it. Um, you know, that's just me, uh, cooking the spoon here. <laughs> and, for me, so I've got these greens. I just put them in whole, right? And again, I've only got this much left. Right. So I'll put it all in because they will, um, when the vinegar starts to work on them, it becomes like a wilted, yeah, more of a wilted salad for this guy. So it's the same exact salad, except just the just changing. A few things of how you cut things up mm -hmm. makes it look completely different. So the kids think that they're getting, a, you know, the salad is different from one night to the next, but it's really kind of the same thing. And what I love about the radicchio is that it just add, it just adds that pow yeah. of color to it, and it keeps its color. Brussels sprouts. And we make this salad, um, you know, I make this salad probably once every two weeks, a variation of it. Mm -hmm. And um, no one ever gets tired of it because this is the Brussels sprouts. I'm putting um, two well, in my head. It's hard to get tired of something that it's that fresh and that tasty you know part of the big thing with eating salads every day is making them and uh, I, I try to make like when I make a toss salad I'll build it up enough so I can have it with all the different ingredients for a couple of days because it is always the the process of making it and... well yeah I'm gonna show you something else in a second am I missing anything uh, apples I put apples in the first thing ginger okay. lemon is already in here I'm adding a little bit of kale Okay, and seeds, I guess. Did we do the seeds? Uh, no, I'm putting pistachios in this one because okay. it's mine, right? Uh, a little bit of broccoli and carrots. Um, the kids want stir fry, and these I oh, yeah. go back up here. Um, I use these a lot in stir fry, which I wouldn't think that I would like, but what I do is I cut onions. Mm -hmm. Same thinness, and I cut mushrooms the same thinness, and so that's like Japan. That's what Mama-san would do. 
She was like, everything needs to look the same, right? So, um, and then I stir fry that and they, they love it, not because it's different. I mean, we certainly eat the same foods over and over and over again, but the fact that it looks different on their plate yeah. is, you know, that's kind of a big thing. Okay, so I've got kale, I've got ginger, I've got, um, this one is, what am I missing? I'm not missing anything. What I'm going to add to this one, though, is um, a little bit of carrots. Because the broccoli slaw does not have enough carrot in me. It, or in it. And I really, really love, um, I really love carrots. And they're so good for you. Yeah. Oh. So I use, okay, so this is my box. Yeah, I'm a real mom in a real kitchen. But this is super sharp. So I leave this in the box. The box is like, I don't know. I've had that for a million years. But what I love. Work. I, I stored my mandolin in, a, in the box that came in at work because it was too sharp to leave laying around. Yeah, you know, I don't want someone to hurt themselves on it. So um, it's kind of tricky to go while you're holding it here. My hair is going. My, my hair is going in my food before I eat it. So then you just go back and forth, and I don't let the kids use this. Um, but I love. Here, I'm just gonna do this. You really need to hold it. Uh, yeah. You know, you ever use a spiralizer? No. So it makes the carrot super fine. And I really like that. When the kids were little, I used to tell them that this was cheese. <laughs> and they would eat it. I know. I, I, I told them later. So, um, so this is what, this is probably what I'm going to eat in a little bit. This will be my salad. Gorgeous. And again, it's just so easy to do. But if you don't want to do all of that, I did find this at the store and it's sweet kale salad. Mm -hmm. So it has, um, it has Brussels sprouts in it and cabbage and kale and chicory, um, dried cranberries, roasted pumpkin seeds and poppy Ooh. seed dressing. Nice. So if you wanted to have the same thing, you could just make this up. The problem is that this isn't vegan, so we don't have. I don't have the same control over some of the stuff that I put in it, and um, so it has a lot more sugar in it because these don't have sugar at all. Right. And normal coleslaw and normal salad dressings do have a lot of sugar, and this is. What makes that not vegan? The salad dressing. Salad dressing? Okay. Yeah, because it's got poppy seed salad dressing in it. And the poppy seed salad dressing is not vegan. Okay. Um, and it also has the um the nuts are roasted. And I like the raw nuts better than the roasted nuts. Um, and this is the other, this is the kale that everyone sees, right? Mm -hmm. The curly kale. I don't like this kale. I just don't like the taste of it. So if you like, this is a great, this is a great, great idea. If you like everything that's in it. But, um, and, and it also, it's a good way for people to try if they don't want to, um, you know, buy all of this stuff and not know if they like it, they can go through and pick out, oh, that's a Brussels sprout. I'm not a fan of Brussels sprouts. I'm not going to put that in my salad. Or I can, um, I love, you know, I love this kale versus that kale. So it, it's, what it is, is it's a nice introduction to um, getting you um, 
getting you to try new vegetables that you may not normally try. So that's getting a bind if you don't have time and you want to eat something a little healthier. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good way to do it. Even for someone like me who's traveling and I just don't want to, I just want to get something quick and eat that's going to be fairly good for me. I could get that and enjoy it. And so maybe it's not the best, but it's better than what I would have had at a restaurant at a, a through a drive through. Right. Right. Exactly. And that's what um, we, we travel. I travel a lot with the kids. And when I travel a lot with the kids, I, um, I try these um, bags of, you know, and to, to see if they like them. Mm -hmm. And it kind of becomes um, a, a sort of a fun thing. Like, what are we going to try on this trip? Sure. So it's, uh, it, it's just creating a sense of adventure when you're trying stuff with your kids. Um, and when you're trying things, I mean, I certainly do not like every fruit and vegetable. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it, it's okay. I mean, kale, kale smoothies, are not necessarily my favorite, even though I'm a vegan, mm -hmm. you know, you know, so it's like, you have to have a, an openness yeah. and a mindset that you're just going to try it. And you, you always have the option to spit it out. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, well, this has been fun. So uh, you showed us two salads and uh, we're just about out of time for the day, but you know, we had a lot of, we had some nice comments and questions and I think it was a great first show. Are you going to do another one next week? I would like to do another one next week. Okay. Can I, do, can I do a soup? You can do whatever you want. I think I'm going to do one of our family's favorite soups, okay. which is vegan, but you can very, very easily make it uh, not vegan. Yeah. Throw a ham bone in if you want. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking, Denise Vivaldo was on the other day and she made a vegan soup and she said as soon as they were done, she was going to throw a ham bone in it. Oh, the lentil one. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I was thinking about that too. I was thinking, actually, I was thinking um, uh, chicken thighs. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Because chicken thighs with the curry and the, you know, that's kind of how I think of that. Um, oh, I didn't mention, you know, you can always add like curry powders and different, you know, you can spice the salad to be more of what you want. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an easy fix or to change it up from day to day. Right. But, right. Okay. Which says with the upcoming snow, do you have any suggestions for vegan soups? Um, well, if you go to, if you go to Renee which is Renee's kitchen, um, I have a whole section on soups. So, we do, um, I do a potato soup where I uh, cook the potatoes on the stove, but I also bake the potatoes. So the potatoes that are cooked on this, I cook the potatoes on the stove in vegetable broth, not water. And then I emulsify that. And then I add to that spices, roasted carrots, and baked potatoes. And onions, but onions go in everything. I should just, I should have a shirt that says onions go in everything. So, um, and, the, and then you just kind of play around with those, that's your base. And then from there, we just usually eat it like that. But, um, you know, you can, you, you know, you can go a lot of different ways from that base, right? So yep. you can add curry to it and make it a curry potato soup. Or you can add pumpkin to it and make it a pumpkin potato soup. So it's the way I cook in the house is I have a base. And then from that base, we decide what we're going to turn it into. And, like, and for those that are not vegan or vegetarian, you know, it's good to get more vegetables in your diet, guys. You don't have to be vegan or vegetarian to love these. And if you're really that opposed to just being all vegetable, you can always throw some bacon in it if it's a potato soup or throw some meat in it like Renee said. Yeah. Bacon those bacon bits, um, like the the bag of bacon bits. Yeah, which, I don't use them. <laughs> I don't use them either, but um I I have a friend who says your soup was so good after I added cheese and bacon bits to it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm okay with that. You know, if you're well, first of all, it's their choice. I'm all about, you know, 
respecting and honoring everyone's choice to eat whatever they want to eat. But, you know, then they sent me a picture of it and I'm like, you know, that does look pretty good. Yeah. 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 Food no. porn, you know, that's, that's it. Just, you know, we, we enjoy other people's food, even if we're not going to eat it because it's pretty and, and we can imagine. Oh, well, the vegan travel. I just, if you follow me on Instagram, I just had chili on there. I went to, I did a chili cook off. Yeah. Why don't you leave your links in there, Renee? Oh. And uh, you can add them in. And I'm also going to leave uh, the link to my show coming up with Susan Sarah. There's that for the next show. And we'll be starting in about five minutes. Uh, and Renee will leave her links and follow us and come back next week at uh, 1105. And uh, we will have some more deliciousness for you. Great. Thank you, Chef Dennis. My pleasure. And Renee, let's get online sometime and we'll test things out with the two cameras with, with me in there too, so we can get a better feel for it. So let's find a time to do that. All right. That'd be great. All right, guys. Thanks. I'll see you all later. Bye.